uh, welcome back for part three of Oliver Rundick's lectures about the motivic slice spectral sequence. Okay, and thanks again for returning. All right, go take it away, Oliver. Yeah, thanks a lot for the introduction, Dan, and for giving me this, this opportunity. So, um, I did not want to uh, give you a recollection of what happened in lecture two, just before passing on to, to higher differentials, I want to move back to um, the last slide of uh, Thursday's talk, which gives a computation of the E2 page for the slice spectral sequence for the sphere. Uh, only a very short part of it, I have to admit. Yeah. So it's uh, the, the pi zero column where you see the associated graded for the fundamental ideal filtration on. Milnovit K theory. There's the pi one column, which has four possibly non zero entries, and the pi two column with possibly five non zero entries. And um, uh, this, we want at least for the one column, this also to be the E infinity page. So we have to look at the higher differentials. And just to recall, Multiplication with this, this element tau is an isomorphism on mod 2 motivic homology. That's this, this little h, which denotes mod 2 motivic homology. And uh, this tells us, thanks to Bovotsky's proof of the Milner conjecture on Galois homology, that uh, we basically see tau multiples of mod 2 Milner K theory in mod 2 motivic homology, at least for, for a field. So this is the, the situation we're over a field of characteristic mod 2 now. And um, this, this is how it looks like. And this also tells us how to compute Steenrod operations. Uh, mod 2 Steenrod operations, I only need square 1 and square 2. So square one of tau is rho. This yeah, follows from the, the Bockstein uh, sequence. And for degree reasons, square two of tau has to be zero. And the Catan formula already computes then what square two of tau squared is. That's tau rho squared. And um, one can identify uh, square one with uh, multiplication by rho or with zero, depending on the parity of the difference of weight and uh, simplicial degree. And square two is multiplication with rho squared up to this, uh, this identification with mod two Milner K theory, depending on yeah, uh, divisibility uh, by four of this difference weight and simplicial degree. And this is interesting because so I move back now. Yeah. Was there a question? Okay, I thought there was a question, but um, maybe maybe it's one of my daughters making noise. I don't know. Yeah, I think that might have just been background uh, noise. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. So square two comes up here on the E two page. For example, if we we look at this guy here, the kernel of multiplication with square two, and we want to know whether there's a D2 differential hitting the first column, we, we want to have some control over the kernel of square two. And the kernel of square two is then the kernel of uh, multiplication by rho squared. And uh, there's a very convenient theorem due to all of Vishik and Wawatsky coming up. And we get the following lemma. Um, so the first part is that all differentials ending in the column for pi zero are zero. And um, all D2, D3, and higher degree differentials for the slice spectral sequence ending in the column for pi one, they are also zero. So uh, this is now a very, very rough sketch. Uh, but it contains the basic sort of basic ingredients for for the zeroth column you just need to compare with the very effective cover of Hermitian k theory and you can see it from there there's that's no big deal 
the second statement is more complicated. For example, we have to say something about possible differentials originating on this kernel of multiplication with rho squared. And uh, what all of Vishnik Vovotsky proved is that the kernel of multiplication with any pure symbol on mod 2 Milner K theory, um, that this is generated by degree 1 elements. So when we take such a generator in degree 1, this means that it's a unit. And this means that the generator lives over the prime field associated uh, that unit. And this is a very small field. I mean, okay. Um, so you could still be in the situation that it has infinite cohomological dimension uh, if you adjoin this, this unit um, to the rational numbers and you have a, sort of a, a subfield of the reals that way. Um, but when you then use uh, real realization and base change, then you can uh, sort of step by step take care of, of the higher differentials. Sometimes you need to use some, some multiplicative structure. There's one, just one issue. Uh, this argument does not apply to differentials which originate in stuff coming from the zero slice. So let me move back to the E2 page. Sorry about that. So this theorem of all of Vishik-Vovotsky applies to mod 2 Milner K theory. And there's a, a variant due to, um, I think, Mekuyev and Suslin for odd primary uh, motivic cohomology, but there's no integral version. So in, in order to, do, to deal with the integral motivic cohomology, uh, the most convenient way is to use some, some Moore spectrum. So um, we sort of introduce finite coefficients also in the zero slice. And um, this works because the possible targets are finite coefficient groups. The, the biggest we have here is mod 12. And then you can sort of guess that uh, the worst, yeah, that might come up is, uh, is a Moore spectrum like the one I've given you here. Um, yeah. you, can, you can play around with these Moore spectra a little. It's, uh, it's not too bad. So this basically, these are the basic ingredients in proving this, this lemma, which takes a bit of, of work. But then we get the E infinity page for the slice spectral sequence of the sphere. So we see here again, the zeroth column is untouched. The second column is, well, uh, someone colored this here red. And the reason is that the, the red parts are those which are mapped to zero when you, when you map to Hermitian K-theory. Yeah. The, the yellow stuff, uh, this might map non-trivially, or in general, it will map non-trivially to Hermitian K-theory. But the red stuff, it, this will go to zero in Hermitian K-theory. So Oliver, and the red stuff there, that must be the things that are related to like new, right? Yes, yes. Yes, the red stuff will, will be generated by nu or by nu squared. And um, I'll, I'll, ex, um, I'll explain this a bit, a bit later, um, how, the, how the generators look like. And the black stuff here looks uh, just the same if you use the slice spectral sequence for the very effective cover of emission K theory. And the, the comparison map, the unit map, uh, is, is an isomorphism on the black stuff. Um, yeah. Okay, um, any questions regarding this table? I hope not. Um, if yes, then please interrupt me. Um, so the issue is now to find out what actually has been computed. So depending on your, on your preference, you might not care too much about this. You might just say this is an interesting computation in itself. But um, it doesn't hurt too much to to investigate this a little. So uh, we can define what what the slice spectral sequence converges to. So 
um, we have this Qth effective cover of, of animotypic spectrum E and the cone, let me call it GQ, um, this then sits in a, in a similar tower. It's just that instead of the Q slice being the, the homotopy cofiber of the map from FQ plus one to FQ, it's the fiber of the map from GQ plus one to GQ. So uh, we can look at the homotopy limit over all of these GQs. They form a reasonable diagram. And this is then called the slice completion of E. And uh, then there's a natural map from E to its slice completion. And the fiber is the homotopy limit over all the Qth effective covers. And by, by construction, the slice spectral sequence, I mean, it uses it at, uh, as its input what comes from the slices. So in some sense, the slice spectral sequence for E converges conditionally to the slice completion of E. And um, we say that a motivic spectrum is slice complete if the map to its slice completion is an equivalence or equivalently if the homotopy limit of, of the Qth effective covers over all Q, Q increasing, if this is contractible. Um, and now we have some examples. Um, I hope you remember these three different filtrations I gave you. Uh, I, I'm, the three filtrations I listed, one of them being the very effective slice filtration. And we've already seen that for MGL and KGL, so the tone spectrum and algebraic K theory, the effective slice filtration coincides with a very effective slice filtration. And um, by its construction, the, the very effective slice filtration is a Hausdorff filtration, which means that the homotopy limit of the very effective Qth covers of any motivic spectrum is contractible because the connectivity increases. So um, we have examples of slice complete motivic spectra. And we also have examples where the slice spectral sequence doesn't tell us anything. For example, this um, etal mod 2 motivic cohomology. So the motivic einberg McLean spectrum for mod 2 coefficients uh, with tau inverted. There all the slices are zero. Uh, the slice completion is, is uh, contractible, but the, the motivic spectrum itself not because it represents etal uh, cohomology with mod 2 coefficients. And here's another example, which, um, yeah, is the motivic spectrum representing Balmer's higher wit groups from the computation of the slices of Hermitian K theory, KQ. One can determine the slices of the eta inverted um, spectrum. KQ with eta inverted. Every slice is an infinite sum of suspensions of mod 2 motivic homology. So if, for example, you pass to mod 3 coefficients for Balmer's higher width theory, um, all the slices become contractible. And then also the slice completion is contractible. But of course, you have lots of fields where you see an interesting contribution in the wit group. Yeah, the wit group of the real numbers is the group of integers. That's the signature of a quadratic form. So the mod three wit group will be a Z mod three. So this, this motivic spectrum is not contractible. So another example of a non-slice complete motivic spectrum. So these, these exist and the question is, yeah, dip, it depends on what motivic spectrum you're interested in. You might want to know whether it's slice complete or not. Um, now there's a very strong theorem due to Mark Levine, which tells us that 
if the, the base field has finite cohomological dimension, then every compact motivic spectrum is slice complete. And in fact, uh, sort of in, in every stalk for the, the, the homotopy sheaves, the, the, uh, the slice rotation is, is finite in any given by degree, at least after inverting the exponential characteristic. So this is, this is really a strong theorem, but it excludes some fields which are interesting. You know, the typical number field you meet on the streets, this will have infinite cohomological dimension. So let's, let's try to, to relax, oh no, not relax. So yeah, we want to relax the condition on the field but this means we have to um, adjust the conditions on the motivic spectrum. And um, sort of the, the basic idea is that it should be connected to the behavior of the Hopf map eta. So one, one reason for, for this is um, the Hopf map Eta is trivial on the, the ironberg maclean spectrum, which is the zero slice of the sphere. So it operates trivial on every slice. And this implies that the slice completion of any motivic spectrum will be eta complete. At least if yeah, you start with some, uh, something which is, say, E effective. And... Um, the, the hope is then that the slice completion can be related to an eta completion and that the eta completion will be easier to deal with. Um, or at least then we have some, some other techniques. And the con slice convergence theorem here says that if E is a cellular motivic spectrum of finite type over a field, then there's a natural equivalence between the slice completion and the eta completion of E. So no restriction on, on the field. We, we still have to invert the exponential characteristic. This is sort of implicit here. Um, but now we only look at certain type of cellular motivic spectrum. Um, in particular, this applies to the sphere spectrum. This is a cellular motivic spectrum with only one cell. It's of finite type. And uh, the slice spectral sequence actually computes the eta completion of the sphere. So this is sort of the, the answer to this question, uh, which came up here, what has been computed? Well, we're trying to, com or we're computing the, the eta completion, not the eta completion of the sphere spectrum, not the sphere spectrum itself. So we have to investigate the difference, but before doing so, I'd like to sketch the, the proof of this convergence theorem. And this requires that I give you a brief and somewhat imprecise definition of what cellular of finite type means. So cellular, uh, yeah, this goes back to Deborah Isaacson, I think, attaching a cell means that you, you have a map where the target is, is a sphere, um, an S plus um, brackets W sphere. Yeah, and the homotopy cofiber is then the result of attaching the cell. And a motivic spectrum E itself is cellular if it's the homotopy co-limit of a sequence where in each step you attach maybe very, very many cells yeah, and this is um, maybe um, there are sort of um, more elegant formulations, but this is one formulation which works. In particular, when you want to say whether such a cell structure is of finite type, so I'm imprecise here, I say a cellular motivic spectrum is of finite type. First of all, um, the the simplicial dimension of the cells that are attached, they, they start somewhere. You do not attach cells of arbitrarily negative simplicial dimension. And um, for every 
connectivity for every simplicial dimension n, you have at most finitely many cells. Yeah, so this is, the, I think, the usual finite type condition that you have also in topology and now applied to, to the cellular motivic spectra. Um, let me just give you some hopefully illustrating examples. So the CS spectrum has just one cell. It's cellular of finite type. Um, so the suspension spectrum of P infinity is... Uh, it's not a compact motivic spectrum. It's, it's not finite, but, oh, sorry. It's cellular of finite type. And in fact, for every natural number n, you have an n plus brackets n uh, cell in, in P infinity. So in every, every simplicial dimension n, there's just one cell. And starting from P infinity, you can also show that the suspension spectra of the, the, the tome spaces of the tautological bundles over Grassmannians are cellular of finite type. And this then implies that also MGL itself is cellular of finite type. And this is very convenient because we have the hopkins morel hoyer theorem, which gives us that um, the motivic ironback with length spectrum for integer coefficients is cellular of finite type over a field of characteristic zero. And if you're interested in positive characteristic fields, um, you can do certain things. For example, you can pass to mod L coefficients. If L is different, if it is, is not the characteristic, then this will be cellular of finite type. And this will suffice for um, the computations away from the characteristic. Okay, then here are some non-examples. Non um, if you look at the eta inverted sphere, it's cellular by construction, but it's uh, not of finite type because you have sort of too many, too many cells of connectivity zero, infinitely many. And um, the, the periodic K-theory spectra, uh, KGL and KQ, they are also cellular. It's, uh, yeah, it's not so, so hard to prove this, um, but they are not of finite type, and this can also be seen by their periodicity properties. And then something which is not cellular, which can be seen by comparison with, with the derived categories of motifs. Um, if you take an elliptic curve, this is not a a cellular motivics. Its suspension spectrum is not a cellular motivic spectrum. So this is really, yeah, from, from some point of view, this is a bit disappointing. Uh, Le Mark Levine's uh, convergence theorem applies to compact objects, for example, to elliptic curves. Um, the slice convergence theorem rules this out, unfortunately. But maybe it can be extended. I'm, I don't know. Maybe someone, someone should be working on this. Okay. And um, here's another finiteness definition, which, which is, again, convenient if one wants to deduce cellularity of finite type on the level of, uh, of effective covers. And uh, yeah, the definition is that basically motivic spectrum is slice finitary if it's E effective for some integer E. And then if there's a, if, if the nth slice can be given by certain suspensions of ironberg mclean spectra with finite or finitely generated abelian um, coefficients, I switched. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a problem with uh, the font here. This should be an HC, not an MC. I'm sorry about this. Okay. So this should be motivic Einberg with lane spectra, 
uh, with coefficients these, these finite collection of finitely generated abelian groups. And then there's one extra condition in order to ensure some um, sort of connectivity. Uh, we want that the simplicial dimension where we start this a n, this should diverge to infinity when n increases. Yeah, so the connectivity should increase with the slice. That's a technical definition. And we see, for example, algebraic bordism is slice finitary. The nth slice for n a natural number is an n plus brackets n suspension of um, yeah, finitely many integral motivic unbound with lane spectrum. And um, the sphere spectrum itself is not slice finitary because we have in every positive slice um, brackets and suspension of a mod 2 unbound with lane spectrum. So when we want to write down this number a n, which describes the connectivity here in this definition, uh, it has to be zero for every every slice for the sphere spectrum. It's just too bad. It does not does not diverge to e infinity well, uh, to to e infinity. Oliver, yes. That, that problem with the sort of the powers of you know eta there. That's sort of like the only problem, right? So like s mod eta is slice finitary. Yes, this will be a lemma on the next slide oh, sorry. or something. Okay. Like this. Sorry. Um, yeah, this is this will be the only problem, but there's a theorem going going into it. I'll I'll explain that. And it's in some sense also a um, um, problem which is restricted to the prime two. If you look at the Moore spectrum one mod p for an odd prime p. This is slice finitary. Uh, this can be checked. Um, it's also um, okay if you invert two and pass to the, the first effective cover. Uh, if you just invert two, well, then you have a problem with the zero slice because the, yeah, the sort of uh, the rational numbers where the uh, denominator is, is two. This is not a finitely generated abelian group, um, but that's sort of the only problem. And this can be read off from topological information, namely the corresponding two page of the BP based Adams Novikov spectral sequence. This gives you the desired increasing connectivity. Um, yeah, and this technical definition works to prove the following lemma, if you have something which is cellular of finite type and slice finitary over a field, then also the slice completion and the homotopy limit over all Qs of the Qth effective covers, these are again cellular of finite type. And the slices of this homotopy limit of the Qth effective covers, this, these will be trivial. And we cannot apply this to the sphere spectrum, but we, we can apply it to the cone on the Hopf map as Dan pointed out. This is going to be slice finitary. And the input in proving this last lemma goes back to Sala's paper on the adams novikov spectral sequence, where he formulates a hope uh, which he sort of took care of in, in low degrees. Um, so there are these, these multiples, um, H multiples of the alpha family elements. And he wanted that they generate everything um, in sufficiently large degrees. And yeah, in, in our notation, I, I would just prefer to use just alpha one or SH. This is the element detecting the, the Hopf map. And Salas hope is true. This is a theorem appearing, uh, proven by Michael Andrews and Haynes Miller. Uh, the first version I've seen 
uh, was from 2014. It appeared a bit later on the archive. And uh, yeah, Salah's hope is true. And this means that um, all the all the stuff which destroys the pos the possible slice finiteness of of the sphere spectrum, this is related to the the Hopf map. So the cone on the Hopf map is then slice finitary. So this answers Dan's comment. And fortunately, we can relate the cone on the Hopf map. I mean, this is some, some desuspension of the projective plane, P2. And uh, we can relate this with MGL. And since MGL is slice complete, we get this connectivity statement. So the map from the cone on eta to its slice completion, this is a one connective map. And this will sort of be, be the start of an induction, uh, which then proceeds to prove the following lemma. If you have a cellular motivic spectrum of finite type, then the, the map from uh, the cone on multiplication by eta on E to its slice completion, this is an equivalence. So E mod eta is slice complete if E is cellular of finite type. That's the lemma. And here's the, here's the proof. Uh, we look at this, this map. This is the middle vertical map in this, this sequence. The, the fiber of the map to the slice completion is the homotopy limit of the Qth effective covers. And then we map down to the respective slice completions. Now, if E is cellular of finite type, so is the, the cone on eta. And this slice uh, finitary property that we have here for the sphere spectrum then implies the same for any cellular spectrum of finite type. So um, what we have here is something which is slice finitary and cellular of finite type. And then there was this lemma, or there still is this lemma, uh, a couple of pages before. Let me just switch back and forth this lemma here. So the, the slice completion and the homotopy limit of the Qth effective covers, these are both cellular of finite type. And the slices of this homotopy limit, they are trivial. So what we get here, this here is cellular of finite type. And the slice completion uh, is contractible because all its slices are trivial. And both rows being homotopy cofiber sequences then gives us um, this equivalence here and also this equivalence. So we will be able to use um, the five lemma as follows. And the, yeah, the other input is that since the connectivity of, of the map to the slice completion for the sphere was one higher than the connectivity of the sphere, the same is true for any cellular motivic spectrum of finite type. So this map here has a connectivity which is increased by one. And this means that it's this fiber, this homotopy limit of the Qth effective covers of E mod eta, there the connectivity also increased. And this leftmost vertical map has then a connectivity which is even one higher. And then we can use the five lemma to deduce that for the, the map in the middle, the connectivity has increased one more. Yeah, and then you can play this game and yeah, you, you get that it's infinitely connective, so it's an equivalence. Yeah, this is the, the proof of the lemma. I hope I didn't go further with five and six and so on. Let's see. Ah, yeah, okay. No. Okay. So this was for, oh, there's a K missing here. So E to uh, the cone on the kth power of the Hopf map to its slice completion. This is then also an equivalence. Um, yeah. 
sorry, sorry about this. There's there's a K missing here. This you get um, sort of by by induction, and the eta completion is the homotopy limit of uh, the di canonical diagram of all these cones, and then we get a corresponding diagram for the slice completions, and we get that the map from the eta completion to the eta completion of the slice completion, that this is an equivalence using the previous lemma. And I think I already convinced you that the map from the slice completion to the eta completion of the slice completion is an equivalence because, yeah, the, the, all the slices are eta complete. Yeah, and this gives you the proof of the slice convergence theorem. And now, sort of, we we have um, one way to compute something for for the sphere, namely the the eta completed part of the sphere, and the other stuff that that comes from inverting eta. So we have this homotopy pullback square, this arithmetic square, which corresponds to the, the Hopf map eta. And yeah, this homotopy polar square induces a long exact sequence of homotopy groups or homotopy sheaves. And um, in particular, um, sort of the, the part connecting um, or sort of the, the part where, where we can sort of deduce some vanishing easily is the eta inversion of the eta completed sphere spectrum. You know, I don't know if this is, is this gonna be the next to no. know? Um, okay, and on this, when I determined this E infinity page, we had this finite columns for pi, pi one and pi two. And this implies that um, the homotopy groups of the eta completed sphere, they, for pi one and pi two, they vanish if the weight is large enough. So for pi one, this vanishes if the weight is at least three, and for pi two, it vanishes if the weight is at least five. And this tells us that this long exact sequence of homotopy groups, uh, at least in a small range, splits a bit. And it would now be great if a similar vanishing statement was also true for the eta inverted sphere. And this is something that I proved by comparison with VIT theory and sort of a, a VIT theory based uh, atom spectral sequence. Uh, I do not want to go into the details of the proof here, but it's a similar vanishing statement. So the characteristic not being two, then pi one and pi two of the eta inverted sphere are zero. So pi zero of the eta inverted sphere, this is the, the VIT ring in every weight by Morel's theorem and work of Bert Kiyou and Dan Isaacson proves that pi three can never be zero. They computed this for, think over the complex numbers, but the computation applies to any algebraically closed field. And they also have a very beautiful computation for, for the real numbers, which is really uh, very interesting to look at. Anyhow, we have um, this vanishing statement for pi one and pi two. And if we look at the connecting map from pi three to pi two coming from the arithmetic square, one can check that also this, this map is zero because this is something on the, and it's the eta inversion of the eta completed sphere. And for the eta completed sphere, we have enough control over the slices to reduce this. So both for pi one and pi two, the sphere looks the same as the eta completed sphere. And this means that we actually have a computation for the actual sphere for pi one um, 
yeah, we, we have to work a little bit more because I only gave you the e infinity page. And um, let's maybe clarify this a little bit. So we have this unit map from the sphere to the very effective cover of Hermitian K theory. And on slices, this induces an isomorphism um, for, for the, the zeroth column already on the E1 page, which is the same as the infinity page for pi zero. So we get an isomorphism for the respective eta completions. Yeah, what I'm, what I'm using here is that the slice spectral sequence for little kq also computes the eta completion of little kq. I am not claiming that it's cellular of finite type. This I do not know, although I bet it's true. But yeah, um, but there's another way to see this, um, an easier way. So there's one, one thing we get from this easily, namely one, one half of Morel's theorem. We have the canonical map from Milnovit K theory to pi zero of the sphere mapping to pi zero of little kq and one can prove yeah by comparison with uh, the periodic kq and milner's conjecture on quadratic forms that this composition is an isomorphism so we get that pi zero of the sphere is at least as big as the milner k theory and the sort of harder part then of the proof of Morel's theorem on pi zero is the uh, uh, subjectivity of the map from the Novit K theory. And this is equivalent then to the injectivity of the map, of the unit map on pi zero for Hermitian K theory. Yeah, so if you have a separate argument that the eta filtration on pi zero of the sphere is Hausdorff, this gives you a, another proof of Morel's theorem. But uh, let's move on to uh, to pi one. Yeah, just to to recall how the e infinity page looks like. So the black stuff, this we see on pi one of Hermitian K theory, very effective cover of it. And the red stuff, this is then in the kernel. And um, this subjectivity that we see here extends to the actual spectra, not their eta completions. And this is also true for, for Hermitian K theory. And there the argument is, is even easier because if you invert eta on Hermitian K theory, you get this width theory spectrum and this is how homotopy groups are concentrated in degrees congruent to zero mod four. It's, it's quite simple from a certain perspective. So let's look at the kernel and there were two red dots, one of them um, coming from the three slice being a quotient of, yeah, basically mod two Milner K theory. Yeah, I can cancel the tau here, thanks to the Milner conjecture on Galois cohomology. And then there's, uh, it's the quotient on mod two Milner K theory, modulo the stuff that comes from mod 12 motivic cohomology via the the connecting map relating mod 12 and mod 2 coefficients. So there's the, the 24 coming in. Yeah. And the other term is um, mod 12 Milner K theory, or if you want to see it as a Milner Witt K theory module, it's a quotient of Milner Witt K theory where you uh, quotient out eta and 12. And now there's um, sort of an argument using the, uh, the slice filtration that tells you that the kernel is not just a Milner Witt K3 module, but already a Milner K3 module. And then one can look at the X group describing this extensions. And there's, I mean, it's just a computation, but I really think this is funny. Uh, the X group is Z mod two over any field of characteristic not two. 
So the extension does not depend on the field at all. There's no arithmetic property or whatsoever entering here. And um, then you can pass to some algebraic closure if you like. Uh, you can use topological realization or some etal realization. And then you compare with topology uh, where the, you can see that the extension is the unique non-trivial one. So you get uh, the mod 24. If you like, you can also use the multiplicative structure in the slices if you do not want to appeal to a real realization functor. But uh, yeah. um, just as an extra information. So what we get as a theorem is this computation of, of pi one for the sphere. And this is, this is um, the unit map gives us a subjection on pi one from the sphere to a little kq. And at least after inverting the exponential characteristic, the kernel is um, Milner K3 mod 24. And this is the thing that Dan already asked about, what, what about generators here? And here's the description of, of generators. Uh, so here's the second algebraic Hopf map, nu, which can be defined, for example, using the Hopf construction on SL2. Yeah, SL2, a group of matrices is via projection equivalent to A2 minus zero, and this is a, a one plus brackets two sphere. So we get a map of spheres. And um, this is sort of one obvious map in, in uh, the one line. The other obvious map in the one line is the topological Hopf map, which of course you have over, over any base. Yeah, and then there's, um, and one can check that the, the Hopf map nu generates uh, pi one plus brackets two of the sphere. So this is just a Z mod 24, the zeroth, Milner K group mod 24 of the field. Uh, the contribution from, from little kq is zero in that case. This generates it as an abelian group, but it generates the whole kernel as a Milner K theory module. And uh, then there's sort of the, the topological Hopf map. This maps non-trivially to, to Hermitian K theory. And um, sort of if you, if you would like both these elements to generate everything, this is not true in general. Uh, for example, if you, if you look at pi one minus brackets two of the sphere over um, yeah, the, the field of Gaussian rational numbers, where you join the square root of minus one, um, there's a computation of in the composable K3, which tells you that there's an, a group of integers as a summoned. Yeah, but uh, the topological Hopf map has, um, has order two and nu has order 24, as, as we've seen here. So these two cannot generate this, uh, this infinite cyclic summoned. So there's, there's sort of more. Yeah, and um, this is sort of an arith arithmetic content for which I, I cannot sort of give you good generators besides what saying that this is something which comes from K3 into composable. Um, yeah, but the problem is sort of that this comes from the, the integral and the lane spectrum in the zero slice. So if you, if you look at the first effective cover of the sphere spectrum, then you have thrown away the zero slice and you do not have to worry about these integral motivic homology groups, which can be, yeah, there's, there are many things that we don't know about these, I guess, or at least I don't know about these. So uh, if you take the first effective cover, then you have a, a finite presentation of pi one. 
So you have these two generators, nu and eta top, and there are three relations. Sort of, yeah, the first of them, eta times nu is zero. This was, yeah, this you can see in a paper by Dagger and Isaacson on, I think, Hopf elements and relations. I don't know the exact title. I should have checked. My apologies then. Yeah, eta top has order two. And then we have this relation, which is also uh, sort of familiar from topology. Eta squared times eta top, this is 12 nu. So if you realize this uh, to the complex numbers, then this becomes eta top cubed is 12 nu top. Uh, you can also, if you like, uh, take the real realization of this statement. Okay. The presentation for pi 1 of the first effective cover of little kq is even simpler. There's just one generator eta top and just, just one relation. And in case you're wondering whether passing to the first effective cover will always give you finitely presented um, milner with k modules, I can disappoint you because already for pi 2, um, pi 2 of the first effective cover of the sphere is usually not finitely even generated. I mean, again, there you have some arithmetic phenomena coming in. If you take um, a cyclotomic field where you adjoin a pth root of unity with p being congruent to minus 1 mod 8, um, then you will need infinitely many generators for, for pi 2. So that's it. Thanks a lot for your attention. Okay, first I'm going to unmute everyone so we can thank him. <clears throat> okay, and uh, questions? I have a question. Uh, can you say anything about Pi 2? Yeah. Yes, I can say something. I think I already said something about Pi 2. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> or can you say like what Pi 2 is? Uh, yeah, the, the thing is, um, I, can, I can point to the, the problem that I, I have. I've, I've had this problem for several, uh, yeah, several months now. Let me just switch back to a lemma regarding the higher differentials. Where is it? Ah, okay, yeah. So I would like to prove that all differentials of degree at least two ending in the column for pi two are also zero. And um, I can prove this for many fields, for example, fields of um, cohomological dimension uh, at most two. So um, and for all number fields, uh, for all fields containing square root of minus one, for all fields containing square root of two. Um, but the problem is that I do not have this, this theorem of all of Vizsik-Vovodsky available for the corresponding, uh, corresponding coefficients. Yes. Oh, just a second. Hmm? Yes. Thank you. Okay, sorry, my, my daughter interrupted. Yeah. Um, the, the point is that um, I would need a, a variant of this theorem for not mod 2 coefficients, but mod 8 coefficients. And this, for some reason, uh, escapes me. I see. Yeah, if, if I have this lemma also for pi 2, I, I can give you a, a description of, of pi 2. It's not very, it's, uh, the, the short exact sequence is slightly more complicated. And in particular, what enters from pi 2 of Hermitian K theory, this involves, for example, or potentially involves also the, the uh, zero symplectic K group of a field. But it's, uh, 
one can, one can write down um, some exact sequence. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Other questions? So I, uh, one question that maybe, you know, so in, in some of these low dimensional cases, you know, you're, you're using, you're describing things in terms of KQ, right? Yeah. So I, one imagines at some point that that would break down. Is that what you expect? I mean, you, you know, if you go into higher and higher stems. Yeah, and the, the contribution you, you see in Hermitian K theory is, it's it's fairly it's fairly limited. You can only see contribution, yeah, in some sense coming from from the the alpha family. Mm -hmm. And um, it is, I mean, the, you might argue that um, this sort of theorem. I mean, one way to state this. Uh, to, or one reason for stating this theorem is that basically these emission K groups are something people have introduced before, but they are not usually not explicitly known. Right. Yeah. So it's just some convenient way to state this. And I assume if you, if you go higher and higher, uh, similar statements will be more and more inconvenient. Right. And of course one could think about, uh, sort of, um, yeah, higher, higher chromatic analogs of, of that. Um, but yeah, I think there's, a, there's still a lot of, of work to be done. Okay, any uh, other questions? Okay, if not, I'll unmute everyone. We'll thank him one last time. Okay. Uh, thanks again, folks. We have one more uh, research seminar later in uh, early December. Um, I'll send an announcement beforehand, of course. And